Uh, we'll get more reaction from this uh, uh, later in the program. But joining me now for the foyer of the House of Commons is Pierre Polyevre, Parliamentary Secretary of the Minister of Transport, with him, Alain Lavergier, the international development critic uh, for the uh, NDP and the Liberal House leader, Dominic LeBlanc. Uh, Mr. Polyevre, what's your reaction to the scenario Greg Weston just described, that the Liberal government tried to deport Jasser, but he remained uh, here, released to the care of his uncle? What, did something screw up here or not? I can't comment on a particular case, but what I can say is that as I listened to Mr. Weston's uh, very detailed report, it made me reflect on the generalized problem that we've had in this country for far too long, wherein convicted criminals are able to remain in this country, sometimes even after they've been ordered deported, for, t for far too long, uh, and a broader problem wherein uh, phony refugee applicants whose cases have been rejected by the Fair and Independent Refugee Tribunal are also able to use uh, endless appeals to stay in the country. Uh, those are two problems for which we provided two solutions. The first was the uh, Protecting Canada's immigration system, which made it easier to remove phony refugee applicants. Uh, the second was the Faster Removal of Foreign Criminals Act, both of which have passed through the House of Commons. But, that, but would those have stopped this? I mean, I'm just trying, let, let's stick to this case here. Would that, have, would that have changed anything in the case of Mr. Jasser? Well, uh, let, let me be clear. We don't, know, uh, we don't know all the details of this particular case, and it would be, I'm not allowed to comment on a particular case. But what I can say is that it would stop the general problem. Uh, and in both cases, we had opposition from the NDP and the Liberals to those proposals. So all we've right. been trying to clean up the system so that uh, our immigration system, our immigration uh, program protects Canadian citizenship and but, Canadian security. We've had nothing but opposition from the two other parties. Okay, Hopefully but they'll this... learn now that they should have supported us all along. All right, but, but I want to just stick to this case. Was this a failure of the Immigration and Refugee Board, this case? I don't know. What you're, according to your, uh, Mr. Weston's report, the Immigration Refugee Board seemed to have issued a deportation order long ago. Yeah, we, uh, we've got the documents in our hand. But, what but, do you but, but, but it, because we, we, I don't have the documents in front of me, uh, but what I can tell you is that even in instances where the Immigration and Refugee Board issues a deportation order, the lengthy process of appeals that had been in place for many years made it impossible for that deportation to actually occur. But and your government that's why we've been that, That's why we've been reforming the system okay. so that we can remove these endless system of appeals and respect the independent and fair uh, Immigration I, and Refugee Board uh, and let it do its I, work. Okay, but he was pardoned, I'm just trying to get at it, the years he was pardoned were under conservative government rule here. Yeah, again, pol politicians don't issue pardons. Uh, that is a ton of I, I appreciate that. That being said, we have also, it's, in, it's interesting, you've raised three issues. Refugee, uh, the, the abuses of the refugee system, we brought in a bill on that. Abuses of, uh, of uh, foreign criminals who, in our country, we brought in a bill on that, and uh, ab potential abuses of the pardoning system, and we brought a bill on that. So okay, we so have acted legislatively okay, so on all the problems. So let's that get Alain Lavergier. So, Mr. Paul Evers pointing out the government's acted on some of these. Is the, do you view this as a failure uh, of the refugee board, and does the government need tougher laws so they can deport individuals quickly? I think at this stage right now, today, it's a bit early to prejudge. I mean, the, the situation is still unfolding. We're still getting details. Uh, I think it would be very extremely important to actually understand what happened. Uh, you know, I'm, I have a PhD in sociology. I like to understand how things happen and uh, come to pass uh, before passing judgment. So I think it's very important to look at the actual fact, what happened, what led to this, and I think it's far too early to make such broad but judgments. Just, as, just uh, you, since you have a PhD in sociology, I would be remiss if I didn't get Don't you to Mr. comment Harper. on what the Prime Minister said today about Justin Trudeau around terrorism. He said this is not a time to commit sociology. As a sociologist, what yeah, do you make of that? I know. Well, sorry. I, to be quite honest, I, I have to confess that I, I, of course, I had a big smile, let's say, let's say when I heard that. Uh, you know, I think personally I can both walk and chew at the same time. So I can both condemn, condemn unacceptable action. Uh, I can both 
support sanctions and, and whatever kind of punishment. And I can, at the same time, think that we can try to understand how this situation came about. Uh, would it be with respect to our, uh, our security structure? So are you offended and all oh, that? when Mr. Harper, I got to get to Donald Blanc. Let me just show you this clip of Mr. Harper. I, I don't want to get too far afield on this Jacer case, but real quick, here's what Harper said about Trudeau today. You know, this is not a time to commit sociology, if I can use uh, an expression. It's time to treat this. These things are serious threats, uh, global terrorist attacks, people who have agendas of violence uh, that are uh, 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 deep and abiding threats to all the values that our society stands for. Well, you're a soci he's, yeah. he basically says committing sociology. Be committing is, sociology. Yeah. Well, I mean, he says it's the Sorry, wrong I've thing committed. to do when you're talking about terrorism. Well, I think when you're, you're looking at tourism, uh, terrorism, you must use all the tools at your disposal. And the tools are dis at your disposal include very important uh, security services, uh, border security services, and the, the conservatives have cut that. It includes also understanding the context, who were they working uh, with. It includes understanding uh, the geopolitics movement. And maybe if sociology can be of any help, and I do believe it is, it's a tool you should use too. Uh, Dominic Albon, this is clearly a shot at Justin Trudeau. and. When he talked about root causes with Peter Mansbridge in the hours after the Boston Marathon bombings, now Stephen Harper has taken a second shot, basically saying that this isn't the time to, I'm just using his words, commit sociology. What do you, what do you make of that? I, I think it would be the time uh, for Mr. Harper to focus on the real concerns of Canadians, and one of them is obviously the security and safety of the Canadian public. The Liberal Party and Mr. Trudeau condemned the attacks, uh, said clearly that those who perpetrated the attacks in Boston uh, should uh, face the full force of American justice. We thank the law enforcement authorities in Canada uh, for having uh, foiled what could have been a terrible uh, circumstance with that train. What this tells us about Mr. Harper, Evan, is that he was sitting in a pew a week ago at St. Paul's Cathedral in London at a funeral for former Prime Minister Thatcher, and he was imagining how he could extract the maximum partisan advantage uh, a day after the horrible events happened in Boston where people died and were injured, uh, many of them very severely. And a week later, he's back at it again. This is somebody who can't resist taking a tragedy and a very worrisome circumstance, uh, uh, whether it's the, the, the arrest in, in, in Toronto and Montreal around the, around the Via Rail incident uh, or potential incident, or the circumstances in Boston, Mr. Harper's default position is always to try and attack character and take, but do, per, take just political in advantage out of a given, circumstance given which Given all is the appalling. commentary about this, given all the commentary about what Mr. Trudeau said, in retrospect, in the hours after the bombing, was that the right moment to start reflecting on so-called root causes? Or is Mr. In your view, should he have had a different view of that? Or do you think this is Mr. Harper simply turning something political? I mean, you know, politicizing this. What's the line here? Because, you know, it's been become a huge issue for Mr. Trudeau. Well, it's become a huge issue because Mr. Harper continually obsesses about it. He must be very worried about Mr. Trudeau if he's taking tragic events like in Boston or worrisome security concerns like the ones around the, around the train uh, and tries to seek partisan advantage out of them. That, to us, is something very worrisome about Mr. Harper's character. Mr. Trudeau was very clear in that same interview with Peter Mansbridge, Evan. He condemned the attacks. He expressed concern for the victims, for those that had potentially lost their lives. He said that those who would perpetrate such horrible acts should face the consequences before the justice system. Uh, he was very clear on that. Mr. Harper said the same thing. Mr. Mulcair said the same thing, to be fair. Um, this has become a completely distorted, hysterical um, circumstance because Mr. Harper is always trying to take some of the well, most scary and, and worrisome events, tragic events, and seek partisan advantage. It's a default position that Canadians okay, so, are sick of that stuff, Evan. Well, well let me ask Mr. Polyev, what exactly does the Prime Minister say when he said this isn't the time to commit sociology? Well, what's wrong fundamentally with trying to understand why people turn to terror? Nothing, but that's not the issue. When Peter Mansbridge looked Justin Trudeau in the eye and said, there's just been an attack in Boston. 
you're Prime Minister, what do you do? The right answer would have been I immediately contact the RCMP and CSIS to ensure there are no threats unfolding in Canada. I check with the border services to see if there's anyone who's crossed the border that we have to be concerned about. I contact the White House to offer collaboration in preventing uh, any further attacks and capturing the perpetrators. I publicly condemn the evil that has been undertaken and I make sure there are services provided from our consular officials in the United States to any Canadians potentially affected. That would have been the right answer. His answer was to go on a meandering pontification about how someone's feeling excluded and that that's why they committed this terrorist act. Frankly, but to be fair, my he priority, did, he did my condemn priority, it. but, but, did, but that's not my point. It, but, but that's not my point. The question for Mr. Mansbridge was, what do you do? And Mr. Trudeau's answer was, he would sit back and pontificate about how the terrorist is feeling excluded. That's not leadership. That's not judgment. He's in over his head. What is, I know there's going to be, I got a minute to respond, but real quick. What does commit sociology mean? I mean, let me just, Again, what's the appropriate, I mean, is there some kind of rule about when you're trying to understand uh, terror? I mean, I mean, what is there some kind of set aside proper uh, timeline here? I, I'm trying to understand, you know, what what's the line here that we're trying to, that the prime minister is getting at? What is it? Are you asking me? Yeah. The, well, the Lifetime is it a day? Okay. On the first, the first thing is, the question that Mr. Trudeau was asked is, what do you do as a Prime Minister in those circumstances? What he did was pontificate uh, along a meandering stream that led nowhere. We need a Prime Minister who can take strong action in a crisis like that. That's what we have in Prime Minister Stephen Harper. Uh, the root causes of terrorism is terrorists. That's, what, that's how we respond. Really? That's yes. it? The root cause is terrorists? Okay. Root, yes, the root cause you're, you're of terrorism. You're saying that's it? You have no other. Is this is it. The root cause of terrorism is terrorism. And that's, that's it. Right. There's no other cause. The root cause of terrorism is terrorists. Well, okay. You know, I, got, I got 30 seconds. I got a sociologist I, and, and Dominic, a lawyer here. Okay. Uh, uh, I, I, Ten seconds each, Ms. Lavalgier and Mr. Lebon. Just to note that this come on the heels of, of ministers saying that scientists who have scientific evidence that goes contrary to what they, they believe should be ashamed. So it's part also of this complete disregard for other people's opinion, for science and, and, and all that, and oh, for okay. knowledge. Well, by the way, we, we have uh, that scientist James Hansen on the show as we had Joe Oliver on yesterday. Uh, Dominic LeBlanc, 10 seconds to respond to Mr. Polyever. What it is, it's Mr. Harper's knee-jerk need to constantly attack others and try and exploit tragic circumstances for partisan advantage. It says something about his character uh, that I think Canadians are becoming increasingly tired of. All right, uh, interesting news all over the place here. Pierre Polyever, Alain Lavergier, Dominic LeBlanc, news about uh, the pardoning of one of the suspects in that, and of course, that ongoing battle between Trudeau and Harper on uh, the terror issue. Thanks to all three of you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Evan. More developments today in the Boston Marathon bombing.